This morning's Breakfast Bible Bite is from the prophetic passages in Psalm 110 and verse 7. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside, therefore he shall lift up the head. To put the passage in its prophetic context, let's read from Matthew 20 and verses 20 through 23. I'm paraphrasing this. The mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her son. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, Jesus asked. She replied, In your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you. Jesus answered by saying to them, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering that I'm about to drink? Oh, yes, we're, we're able. Jesus told them, You will indeed drink from my bitter cup. Jesus was obliged to drink of the brook from that bitter cup of suffering and tribulation which the Father put into his hands. This was necessary if he were to become the propitiation for sinful humanity and save any by satisfying the wrath the Father held against all natural-born people. Judged by sinful men and in a state of humiliation, he willingly suffers the shame of the cross, followed by his victorious resurrection that has lifted him in eternal exaltation. That will be confirmed forever before his friends and enemies alike at the judgment seat of Christ and those at the great white throne judgment. He is victorious and triumphant with his head raised up high above all his enemies. We read about Christ's appeasement of the Father's wrath in Romans 1, 18. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. We can establish the context in the previous uh, paraphrased passages where Paul writes in Romans 1, 16 and 17, I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. In preparation for his propitiatory offering, we read in John 18, 1 through 3, that Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley and made his way up to the Mount of Olives, where there was a garden, and, and he and his disciples went into it. The scriptural dialogue is completed in Luke uh, 22, 39 through 45. He went out and made his way, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he told them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and began to pray. Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthened in him. Being in anguish, he prayed more fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from his prayer and came to his disciples, he found them sleeping, exhausted from their grief. Judged by unredeemed men, he submitted like a lamb to the slaughter and allowed himself to be nailed to a cross. As God's wrath against the sins of the repentant sinner was satisfied, as Jesus was about to die, he, he bowed his head. We read about this moment in John 19.30. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. On the third day, he was able to lift up his head by the power of the Spirit in his resurrection. He lifted up his head as a conqueror, indeed, as more than a conqueror. He was indeed king of all kings. This denotes not only his right to adulation, but, his, but to his exaltation as Lord of lords, not only by his former deity, but by his triumph over mortal flesh. We read in Colossians 2, 13 through 15. And when you were dead in the trespasses in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive with him and forgave us all our trespasses. He erased the certificate of debt with, death with, its, of debt with its obligation that was against us and opposed to us and has taken it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. He triumphed over them, having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them. His victory is reflected in Psalm 75:10. 10. 
I will cut off the horns of the wicked, but the horns of the unrighteous will of the of the righteous will be lifted up. And in his sovereignty over the entire earth is recorded in Zechariah fourteen through nine. On that day Yahweh will become king over all the earth, Yahweh alone and his name alone. 